So having introduced all the uh, assumptions about uh, structure of the model, uh, matching on the product and labor market, as well as describe how firms recruit workers and produce, uh, produce services. Now we're in a position to define the firm problem and solve the firm problem, uh, which actually is not going to be um, too difficult. Um, so what do firms do in the model? Uh, so if you take the representative firm, uh, so uh, firms, what they do is they maximize profit. By choosing, uh, so what is what do they choose by choosing? So you can say they choose uh, the number of workers to hire. That's exactly equivalent to choosing how many vacancies they post, and that's again exactly equivalent to choosing how many producers they have. All of these things are exactly equivalent. Basically, the firm has just one decision to make, which is, you know, how many workers do I want uh, that are in charge of production, and then from that. Once I know my number of producers, I also know the total number of workers that I want, and I also know how many vacancies I have to post. So, uh, but the, simp the simpler thing to do is, mathematically is to think of the firm as choosing the number of producers. So firms maximize profit by choosing a uh, number of um, producers n. Uh, and uh, taking as given, of course, so they are going to take as given uh, all the market tightnesses, product market tightness, labor market tightness, they take that as given. You know, each firm, we assume that we have a, a mass one of firm, but each firm is um, atomistically small, so they have no effect, you know, although they do post vacancies, they do supply uh, services, they do not, you know, they do, they have an infinitesimal effect on the tightnesses and they, when they do their, uh, they solve their, their maximization problem and they maximize profit, they don't take into account how they are going to affect tightness. So they take as given the market uh, tightnesses, X on the product market and data. And they also take as given all the prices. So the price P and the wage uh, W. And of course, when we solve uh, the model, we're going to assume that, uh, well, you know, price is given by price norm, wage is given by wage norm, the firm knows that, so they'll be able to uh, take as given the correct price, correct wage. Market tightness, product market tightness, labor market tightness, these are determined by the actions of everybody in the economy. Um, but when we solve the model, we'll assume that the firm um, anticipates the correct product market tightness and the correct uh, labor market tightness. Um, so here, just something uh, that I want to note is that it's completely equivalent to say that the firm uh, you could say that the firm chooses number of employees and that's because you know you could, you could reformulate the problem by saying that the firm chooses number of employees that's because uh, l is just one plus star of theta n so, you know, given that you take data as given, choosing L or choosing N is exactly the same. And this is, you could also, uh, another equivalent formulation would be to say that the firm chooses the number of vacancies V hat to maximize profit. Um, and of course, that's because V hat is just L divided by Q of theta hat. So once you take, uh, you know, theta is given, V hat and L, uh, they are linearly related, and then L and N are linearly related. So V hat, L and N 
are all linearly related. So you could formulate the problem by saying that firm chooses vacancies to maximize profit or employment to maximize profit or producers to maximize profit. This is very much the same argument as what we saw in our basic model of Slack in which I showed you how you could reformulate the entire model in terms of visits instead of formulating it in terms of output. Here you have the same equivalency, uh, but we'll choose, we'll focus on producers because it will simplify a little bit the analysis. Uh, all right, so uh, the firm text has given tightnesses, prices to maximize profit. So to be able to figure out uh, what the firm does, we have to uh, write down what are the profits. What are the firm's profits? So firm's profits are going to be uh, revenue minus cost. So what are the revenue? It's basically uh, revenue from the sale of services. And what is the cost? Well, here your only cost as a firm is the wage that you have to pay to all your workers. So that's minus the wage bill. Okay, so uh, what is the review from the set of services? Well, uh, we know that the firm has a capacity of K services, but we know that because there are matching friction on the product market, not all of these services are going to be sold. And in fact, the probability to sell a service is F of X, the selling probability. So in fact, the number of services that are going to be sold is f of x times k. And then what is the price of each service? That's p. So this is going to be the revenue from the sale of services. So this is our capacity, the capacity of the firm, the max amount that they can sell. This is the selling probability, and this is just the price of a service. So this is your revenue from the sale of services. From that, we have to subtract the wage bill. So the wage bill, we have a nominal wage W, that's the wage per workers, and the number of workers is going to be L. So these are, uh, so this is our nominal wage. And this is the number of employees. So now here you can see the so X, P, W, these are taken as given. You have K and L, uh, but of course, underneath K depends on the number of producers through a production function. L depends also on the number of producers uh, through the, you know, the, given the matching wage. So here we can reformulate the profits so that they depend only on one variable, the number of producers. So we'll have profits are going to be P, F of X, what is K the capacity? Well, it's given by the production function, so it's going to be A and alpha. So you can see the revenue from the set of services is going to be increasing in the number of producers. Because more producers, more capacity, more sales. Minus W, and then we'd have 1 plus tau hat of theta times N. Uh, that's because 1 plus tau of theta times N is just L. Tau of theta is a matching wage. So it's the number of recruiters per producer that the firm has to employ to fill vacancies. So here we have our matching wedge. <clears throat> here we have producers. Producers and here, here we have technology that also shows up. So here we have the profits. Uh, and what's good here is that this is just a function, function of n. And more than this, you can see that Alpha is strictly less than one, so the first term is uh, strictly concave in n. The second term is linear, uh, so in fact, it's this function that we've uh, the function that we found here for profit is uh, is going to be concave in n, strictly concave, in fact, because alpha is strictly less than one. Um, so as a result, we are maximizing a concave function. Uh, so this is just a standard uh, concave maximization problem. Uh, 
uh, and we know to uh, we know to solve this concave maximization problem. We just take the first order condition. We set that first order condition. We you know uh, so we take the derivative, set the derivative to zero. We know that of course that's a necessary condition. But given that it's a concave maximization problem, it's also a sufficient condition to find the maximum of the function. Uh, so that's all uh, going to be very easy. So what we are trying to do is max over n positive of um, p a f x n alpha minus w one plus star hat of theta times n can take the derivative so that gives us p a f of x alpha n alpha minus 1 minus w 1 plus star hat of theta has to be equal to 0. Uh, that's our first order condition, which is here a sufficient condition uh, that's a sufficient condition to find the maximum, the global maximum of our profit function. All right, uh, and so if we reshuffle stuff around, we can write it as uh, this first order condition, we can write it as n alpha minus 1 is equal to uh, 1 plus star hat of theta times w divided by p. And this has to be divided by uh, alpha f of x. Okay, and then if we want to, because at the end we know that what the firm cares about is finding the number of uh, producers, so we can rewrite it to get the number of producers, and uh, so that's going to be. So here I'm going to put everything to the power of 1, 1 minus alpha, which is positive. Uh, right, and so I need to flip all of this. So I have a alpha f of x, and that's going to all be divided. So I'm inverting this fraction that's divided by a alpha f of x, 1 plus so hat of theta times w divided by p. Okay, and then uh, if I also want to figure out how many, so this is the number of producers that the firm wants to uh, that the firm wants to hire, and then if I want to uh, find the number of employees well that's very easy because the number of employees is just one plus tau hat of theta times n so i just need to so i'll get that l the, the prof, so this uh, i can flag it this is our profit maximizing number of producers okay and then if i want the number of employees it's going to be a alpha f of x and then i'll have one plus star hat no sorry I'm gonna, then i'll have w over p the real wage that's going to be one over one minus alpha <clears throat> and then I will have one plus star hat of theta. So I have a one because I've multiplied n by this, but then I had a one plus star hat of theta in the denominator. So I need to have minus one over one minus alpha. And so this can be simplified a little bit. So L, the optimal number of employees going to be a alpha f of x 
W over P, 1 over 1 minus alpha, times And so the key thing here is that I have to simplify uh, this expression here. So this is 1 minus 1 over 1 minus alpha. Uh, that's just going to be minus alpha over 1 minus alpha. And so I can rewrite all of this here. So it's going to be 1. Oops. This is just going to be 1 over 1 plus tau hat alpha over alpha 1 minus alpha. And what's good here is that uh, this is a positive and this is a positive exponent. So it'd be easier to interpret all of this. And so this is our expression for the um, optimal number of employees in the firm. And so how can we interpret our results, both the number of employees and number of uh, producers and that maximize profit? Uh, to get a good interpretation, we can just come back to the origin of these two equations, which was the derivative that we took uh, here and set it to zero. So here we took the derivative of the profit function and set it to zero. So we can rewrite this as follows. Basically, what we did is that we set that derivative to zero. And so uh, if we understand what this derivative uh, set to zero means, then we can understand what the intuition behind the results. But you can see here what this says, what you have on the right-hand side is the wage time one plus tau of theta. That's basically your marginal cost of production. Uh, it's the cost of having one producers, one extra producers. Marginal cost of production, cost of one extra uh, producer. And that cost you can see is W, the wage that you pay that producer plus tau hat of theta W, which is the wage that you have to pay the recruiter, basically that's necessary to get, uh, to get the producers. So the one here, that's the producer, that is wage. And this is that the wage for the recruiter to get the producer. So the marginal cost of production uh, is not only the wage you pay the producer, but also the wage you pay the recruiter that allows you to get the producer. So this is our marginal cost of production. And what does it have to be equal to? Well, it has to be equal to uh, the uh, marginal revenue from one producers that's what you have here the marginal revenue from one producer and so that marginal revenue um, it's composed of uh, three things let's say uh, so on the one hand you have this here this element a alpha n alpha minus one so that's the marginal product of labor you have the marginal product of labor times here this element you have the price of one of this you know uh, one of this item of production one service um, so here we have the price of one service we have the no NPL, so the marginal product of labor, the number of extra services produced when you add one uh, producer. But of course, not all of these extra services produced are sold. So that's why we have f of x here. Uh, so it's times the selling probability. So basically, when you add one producer, you increase the capacity by the marginal product of labor. That extra capacity, you actually only sell a fraction f of x of, uh, of it, and then you sell it at a price. So the marginal revenue from an extra producer is the marginal product times the price times the selling probability. And this marginal revenue has to be equal to the marginal cost. Uh, okay, so basically you add producers until their marginal profitability is zero.
That, that's our condition here. And once you reshuffle things around, you get these two equations. Uh, so the n that we have here is the n such that the marginal profit is exactly equal to zero, and the l is the l such that the marginal profit from the producers is exactly equal to zero. Uh, 